I spoke with Jesse Mueller, who will be starring in the Philharmonic's production of Carousel. We recorded this interview on Monday, February 18th. Our special guest today is Jesse Mueller. You all know Jesse because we've seen her uh, currently on Broadway in The Mystery of Edwin Drood. This past summer, she was uh, Cinderella in the Shakespeare in the Parks production of Into the Woods. And last spring, Sweet and Low Down with Michael Feinstein at Jazz at Lincoln Center. She made her Broadway debut on A Clear Day You Can See Forever opposite Harry Connick Jr. She's also the recipient of the 2012 Theatre World Award and has been nominated for a Drama Desk Award, a Drama League Award, and a Tony Award for Best Performance by an Actress in a Featured Role in a Musical. So, Jesse, what we didn't say is that uh, the New York Philharmonic's uh, production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel is coming up uh, Wednesday, this February 27th to Saturday, March 2nd, and you're going to be playing Carrie Pipperidge. You are rehearsing during the day and doing Druid at night. Is this what's happening? Yes. <laughs> She's doing a little double duty right now, as we like to call it. Well, you know, tell us, uh, how's that working for you? The Both of them are pretty demanding uh, demanding schedules. Well, they're really similar um, as far as shows are concerned. No. <laughs> um, it, I mean, it is demanding, but, you know, you'd be surprised. Everybody is, I think almost everybody involved is super busy, and people are going out to do concerts, and, um, you know, Kelly's doing her show, so... Stage management is being amazing and gracious and working with everyone's schedules. And this is sort of, it's just sort of how it works. And um, they've been really wonderful with about helping me out with my schedule. And the people at Roundabout with Drew have been great about letting me do the New York Philharmonic thing. So it's been great. So th there's no uh, possibility that they'll pull something from Drood into Carousel, like say, you know, let the audience decide the ending. This <laughs> I don't know. I think, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's always good to reimagine pieces. So yes, maybe there'll be some improv at the end of Carousel. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, you know, Hammerstein. They were always trying new things, right? <laughs> you know, in the I movie version, in the movie version of Our Town, that night, the 1938 version, I think, with William Holden and Martha Scott. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they rewrote the I've ending. I've never seen that one. No. They rewrote the ending, so Emily lives. So maybe we that's, could rewrite. That's a little different, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we could. Maybe we could rewrite Carousel. And Billy was like, you know, oh, just kidding, you know. Yeah, right. Spoiler <laughs> alert, people that are listening. Yeah, what if right I, before I, I, he dies, we just have a, a now audience members? What do you want to see happen? I don't know, guys. I think you might be onto something. <laughs> I did a production of Carousel where the says, "If my Billy Bigelow runs away with Jigger again, I'm going to quit the business." So oh. there you go. It happens. Yeah, I think Jigger needs, a, you know, another number. Jigger's turn, that sort of thing. Jigger's turn. <laughs> Expand upon the bromance between he and Billy Bigelow. Yeah, absolutely. Re revisit it, you know, rethink it. Yeah. But uh, you know what's so curious to me, um, and maybe you can fill us in a little bit, Jesse, uh, this is being billed as it's more than a concert production. It, it has a, a credited set designer, Alan Moyer, uh, lighting design, Ken Billington, mm -hmm. costume design, David Woolard. So can you give us a, a, a general idea of, of how fully staged it's going to be? Well, I mean, right now we are... We're staging things. I mean, there's going to be, as far as I know, and, and um, people have been sort of rehearsing. We've been rehearsing kind of in, in different groups and doing what we can when we can. So as far as I know, there will be a full ballet for the uh, for the ballet se sequence. I mean, some of those other sort of dance numbers as we know them from the show are going to be truncated. But um, they're staging for scenes, and the scenic elements are going to be really, really beautiful. And I think maybe scenic elements is the way to... As a way to describe it, um, okay. it's a suggestion sort of of the world that, that we're seeing. And it was interesting. I was talking to, we were talking about costumes the other day because I had a fitting. And you kind of get to the, it is very specific. And because it's in a world of um, these people that work so hard and work on the land and work on the sea, you know, it, it would be interesting. It, it kind of wouldn't work with the with the guys. It's so much of somewhat of an easier fix, but you can't really have women coming out in evening gowns, mm. you know, playing mill workers. It's not quite as convincing. So <laughs> I think it's a really great decision for them to, you know, to go there and and make that leap and, and costume a bit. I think it's going to, it's I think it's going to help get the story across. That's great. So yeah. um, this uh, 
this uh, production that you're involved with, I just want to run down some of the credits here so that the listeners who might not be familiar with uh, the Philharmonic production that's upcoming, uh, mm -hmm. let them know that John Rando is going to be directing it, Warren Carlyle's choreographer. It says uh, Chad Beglin's script adaptation. What's Chad doing? Does anybody know? Uh, yes, Cutting I mean, it. there are, it's, it's somewhat of a, of a long piece and because, because there's, so there's just, he's been great about um, making some, some really, uh, smart cuts for scenes and things like that, and um, making uh, making sure different versions of the text that have appeared. You know what I mean? That we're doing what's what's truest to the original text, and then he's working on you know certain cuts when he can, so that it works better in the concert yeah. setting. Yeah. And in the cast, um, playing Julie Jordan is uh, Kelly O'Hara. Uh -huh. Keep going. I just want to uh, hear you say everybody's name. <laughs> Because when I think about when they sing, we it makes me to, happy. We have to pause every time we say Kelly O'Hara. Nathan yes. Gunn is Billy Bigelow. Sethney Blythe is Nate Fowler. Shula Hensley is uh, Jigger Craig and Hope Shuler. Uh, Jason Dinelli is uh, Enoch. And you are, of course, playing Carrie, Carrie opposite uh, Jason. Uh, Kate Burton is Mrs. Mullen. John Collum as the starkeeper. And uh, Robert Fairchild as the carnival boy, and Tyler Peck as Louise. So uh, I don't know Tyler. Um, Michael, do you know her? Well, they're both they're both apparently very very um, incredible ballet dancers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have yet to meet them, but uh, it's fun. Every day we see Warren, he just has this delight, the look on his face, like, oh, I've just been working on the ballet, and it's, I mean, he's just, <laughs> he's always such a, such a wonderful presence anyway, but he just seems delighted by the work they're doing and just kind of blown away by them, so I'm really excited to meet them and to, to see what they've been working on. And how incredible to have John Cullum as the <laughs> Oh, my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting next to him today during the equity meeting. I mean, that was an interesting, I was like, who are you, Jesse, and what is your wife? It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you don't really think you're going to be sitting next to John Cullum in an equity meeting someday in your life. That's pretty nice. How wonderful. That's cool. Yeah. Ever think about this, uh, your days at Syracuse and those uh, beautiful weather up in there in the... Ah, uh... Uh, yes. When I weathered the winters, <laughs> climbing up and down the hills of the campus. <laughs> no, I mean, it's such it's such a stellar cast. And for me, I don't know. I The first day, I think I was a little intimidated. And then I walked away and I thought about that night and I was like, no, 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 this is going to be a really, really cool learning experience because um, just the focus that we can, that we can take on the music in this setting is just going to be incredible and people are going to hear this score in a way that they haven't heard it in the longest time. I think it's 71 pieces oh my goodness. in the orchestra that, that we're going to be working with. Um, so it's just going to be such a treat for people. I can't wait to hear the orchestra. I mean, the first time we hear that waltz, I'm just, I'm so excited. But to, and to hear these singers, like Kelly and Nathan and Stephanie and and Jason and everyone, I, I feel bad. Like, have I left someone out? But um, the, 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 they're just amazing at what they do. The first of all, just the gifts that they have with their voices and the technical proficiency that they have is just. It's incredible to watch. It really is. Well, I got to uh, interview Jessie when she won her Theater World Award for On a Clear Day. Oh, that's right. And uh, I, we discussed the fact that, uh, I mean, we uh, this was obviously before Drood, so that hadn't even happened yet. So right. really, really, at that point, we only knew her from On a Clear Day. Um, and But I, I noticed that in her bio, she, you know, her roles range from Adelaide in Guys and Dolls to... Amalia and she loves me. Uh, so I guess this is the first time that New York will get to hear your soprano, huh? I can't. Maybe so. I, a little bit of it in uh, in Into the Woods. But, oh yeah, uh, I guess it's true. A little bit in that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even that stuff. Um, this is such an interesting score, and we were talking about it the other day. It's interesting too that you have your your sort of your lead female character with Julie, and then you have Carrie, who's not. It's it's a change from Oklahoma, you know what I mean? Carrie's sort of her sidekick, but it's not a Duane, and they have, um, you know, Julie sings higher, I would say, than Carrie, but they're both sort of in that soprano range. It's really interesting that he has two sopranos written, um, so it's been fun to play with the color of things and and uh, find some, some interesting things to do musically while still staying, staying true to the, like, the true soprano nature that, it, that it's written in still. 
That is true. I mean, that is quite unusual. But, you know, that's because they – Rogers and Hammerstein realized, you know, we we can't just make Carrie a mezzo because we, you know, because Julie's a soprano, um, right? Or I mean, make her a belter or something. That's yeah, just not what they, that's no. not what they wanted to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's. Uh, we have some questions about Drude. I know that uh, Laura and Aileen had some questions. So you two want to throw some out? Yeah, sure. 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 Yeah. I was wondering, um, you know, the, we actually have seen Druid a couple of times. It's a show that we love. And the thing that we love about it is that it feels kind of so off the cuff at times. And I was wondering how off the cuff actually is it? Like, is all of that sort of blocked or do you have the freedom to sort of do, sort of go with it where you want to? Um, I think definitely by the time you get to the lovers, which is sort of the last segment that we do, I guess you would say, where they pair up one female character and one male character. And I should say the audience does. When I say we, I mean the audience literally chooses. <laughs> um, uh, that that can be fairly off the cuff. I mean, what's written is a male-female part in the vocal that ends up showing up. And then, um, and then there are scenes that are written for each character pairing. Every once in a while, there's just like, <laughs> every once in a while, there's some improv that goes on. But it's honestly, it depends on the audience. It depends on what the, how the audience is reacting, what it feels like the audience wants, whether they are responding to that kind of off-the-cuff stuff or whether we feel like we need to push forward. It, it's it's interesting. I've never done anything like it. And I was wondering, really I mean, has, has anything sort of really, truly surprising happened, either in that moment or, or, or elsewhere? We had, one, we had one night. It was so great. Um, Andy Carl, who was playing the role of Neville at the time, and um, Cheetah Rivera plays a character named Puffer, and they were paired up as lovers. And so they start their scene, which I don't know, is a couple lines in, and then it was it was Andy Carl's line, and he just he just had this look on his face, but it wasn't like dread; it was just sort of delight, and he just kind of off the cuff he went. I mean, you could tell he went up, and he just went, "We don't do this one very often," and the audience just loved it they just <laughs> lost it and laughed and then eventually it was like and, and all of us around because the rest of the characters are sort of watching this occur and uh and we all laughed and then he got on it and you know back on it but yeah so every once in a while every once in a while things things happen that like have never happened before i'm and, told uh, that, that often the pairing at the end is cheetah and the the, the 15 year old kid yes that <laughs> also happens <laughs> But you know what? It's not her. She, the audience makes the call. Cheetah just does what she's told. <laughs> <laughs> and the night that we saw it, Helena was actually um, the murderess on the night that we went. And I was wondering, um, how often is, is she chosen? Um, I, I guess fairly often. It'll be funny just when you think you've got it figured out, like the, the rhythm of it all. You're like, oh, well, sometimes I get, I get chosen on Wednesday matinees. It's like it turns on its head and you, you don't done for three weeks or something. But um, so I don't know. We get, we get a lot of Rosa Murderer, and then I think maybe Puffer is the next. Oh, okay. Next popular, and then maybe the two, the two Landless Twins are, are close runner-ups, or maybe Bazard. Everybody, huh. everybody has done it. That's oh, wow. really fun. Everybody has done it. And um, Rupert Holmes, who who wrote who wrote the play, and, um, he was so thrilled when Bobby Creighton, who plays Dirtles, got to do his confession. And he's done it twice, I think. And Dirtles never, never did his confession in the original Broadway production, I believe. Wow. He was, wow. He was never chosen. And he's gotten to do it twice in the revival, which is really fun. The recording <laughs> is so fantastic, Jesse. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. They they did a they did a beautiful job, and um, Paul Gemignani, our our maestro, he he really took good care of us and made that happen. And all the people at the roundabout were really really worked hard to to make that happen. So we're all really proud of it. Thank you. Good, great. So, uh, did you have a question about Into the Woods, Laura or Lane? Oh, yeah. The question that I actually wanted to ask about Into the Woods is that um, I loved yeah. the sort of very modern approach to the characters in that. Like they were, yes, they're these fairy tale characters, but I felt like, you know, we looked at them and we kind of like knew these people. And, you know, Cinderella is sort of, her sort of ambivalence about the prince felt so modern to me. And I was wondering if you saw her that way, if you sort of know that girl, it was very interesting to me. And I love that. Oh, that's cool. I think that was definitely, um, 
that was definitely a consideration. Also in the design of it all, because um, there was a lot of talk about that, about being able to recognize the people when they went on stage. I mean, like, oh, well, that's Cinderella. And that, and maybe not even right off the bat, but a couple of scenes in, you know, a couple lines in to be like, oh, that's the Cinderella. And that's, but yeah, to also have elements of, um, yeah, something relatable. Yeah. You know, not, not, not fairy tale in the Disney sense, but because that's the brilliant thing about that show, I think, is the thing that, that, that you have to remember is that we love fairy tales because they're relatable. Right. Fairy tales, fairy tales, I mean, they're so universal. And a lot of those fairy tales that happen in that play happen in those stories exist in so many cultures. So they're just really universal. I mean, Cinderella is all about. I wish or I want. They're 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 want stories, and hers is rags to riches. And I think everybody can relate to that. Everybody always finds themselves in a situation where they wish things could be better. So I don't know. I think I think that's where I started. I felt when I did it, I also just felt I don't know. I felt very very close to that storyline and the kind of to me. I think I think my way into it when I got to do it, which timing wise I was so happy about, was just. Um, I'm not being very eloquent, but uh, it had to do with you think you know what you want, and then you get it, and it it just it's so it's so di- it's so different. Where you think you should want what everyone else wants, and then when you finally get it, it it's just different. But it, it, sometimes it doesn't fit. Some, sometimes it doesn't fit you. Sometimes it it makes you uncomfortable instead of happy. And I think that's sort of what happens to Cinderella in that play. Mm-hmm. That's that's the after happily ever after. You know what I mean. I think she realizes that maybe this is not what I want. Maybe this is not what I need. It was. Uh, I read something today that uh, speaking of fairy tales that I had ne- never heard of before. Albert Einstein said, "If you want your children to be smart, read them fairy tales. If you want your children, oh, that's to, interesting. If you want your children to be really smart, keep reading them fa- fairy tales." Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, wow, I've never heard that Einstein had said that before. And it worked in, <laughs> it it actually relates pretty well to Into the Woods. Uh, well, that's quite an yeah, endorsement. That's quite an endorsement from Einstein. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> well, that, no, that's fascinating because I think, I think sort of in our modern world too, we still have this obsession with it. And when I said something about Disney earlier, please don't. I am the hugest Disney fan. I look, I'm looking at a Tinkerbell mug on my kitchen counter right now. Um, <laughs> and there's a, there's that thing about, and I think, you know, as women growing up, too, of, gosh, you know, are we doing our little girls a, disturb- a disservice by telling them princess stories and your prince will come and all this? But I don't know. There's there's something beautiful in fairy tales, too, especially just the wide range of them. So many of them are about morals. Yeah. And I think right. that's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a great thing to take away from them. As uh, somebody who's been to Disney World six times this year, <laughs> my wife has I got, envy my you. Wife's got my wife's got a Disney problem, definitely. <laughs> hey, that's okay. But we we take uh, our kids. Um, our uh, my my daughter just said, that, you know, she's five, and she turned around and she said, "Can we go to Disney this weekend?" I'm like, "Are you <laughs> go this weekend? Come you on!" You trained her well. <laughs> my wife has trained her well. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, when did you uh, graduate from Syracuse? I graduated um, 05. 05. So you came out of Syracuse and you did On a Clear Day and then Into the Woods and Drood and now the Philharmonic. Is this, is this, is this just tremendously exciting for you or is it, is it that you had this plan in your head? Some people have this plan. I'm going to do exactly this by this point. <laughs> wow. You know what? I, I did not. I did not. I also was blessed to have an amazing career in Chicago. I went back to Chicago, um, which is an amazing theater town, right after school. Sure. Yeah. And I got to work. I got to work. I got really lucky, and I started working right away, and I learned from those experiences. And um, and like you were saying before, I got to do roles that I think I w- a range of roles that I don't think I ever would have gotten to do if I'd come to New York right away. Not that that's good, bad, or different, you know, whatever it is, but that was just the way it worked out for me. Um, so I learned, I learned so much working. I, I, I see by your bio, you worked at the Goodman, Chicago Shakes, mm-hmm. Writer's Theater, Mary Lincolnshire, Drury Lane, Court Theater. I mean, uh, these are such A-list theaters. It's such a... Yeah, yeah. I mean... Oh, it's, I mean... It was amazing. I, 
I actually did. Um, I actually did a production of Carousel with the Court Theater that was in, and they did a. It was a dual production with Longworth Theater. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, um, so, so it's been interesting to 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 revisit to revisit it because that, that I can't remember what year I did that, but um, you know, it's funny when you. It's very cool. I think maybe this is the first time coming around to a show again mm-hmm. and seeing it in a very different light, depending on, you know, <laughs> what's happened to you since that, since you did that show and just like the lens that you sort of see it through now. Well, another, very one, of interesting. Je- another one of Jesse's roles that I didn't mention earlier was, and God, I would have loved to see this, Veruca Salt and Willy Wonka. <laughs> 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 I had the best. Pink. It was like a bubblegum dress. I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was Where was ridiculous. that? Um, that was at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Sure, that was part of their young audiences um, mm-hmm. uh, program that they do there. Um, did it one summer. Um, we had a ball. A bunch of, you know, it was just a great group of people. And it was neat. We had a... Um, there was a lot of puppetry in the production, which was like very cool, and the kids loved it. Yeah, and I just got to be a brat. It was very fun. <laughs> and, also, and I got to play an Oompa Loompa. See, I didn't put that. I should put that on my resume. <laughs> Are you doubled? Well, I. It's very complex, guys. Okay. I was Baruch Salt being an Oompa Loompa because the Oompa Loompa was a puppet. Uh, oh, I see. I think that's how it worked. I'm trying to remember. And, well, I believe yeah. they're doing they're doing a new version it of it. It's very in- layered. <laughs> They're doing a new version of it in London now, so uh, so who oh. knows? Maybe we'll uh, we'll see it on Broadway. But I think it's a different. Yeah, story. I would think it would be a fantastic stage adaptation. If, you know what I mean? If you brought more of it from the book and mm-hmm. right, I right. have to write. I mean, there's some there's some songs in the movie, and then f- but um, but yeah, you'd have to write more music. I would think. Yeah, from Willy Wonka to Henry the Fourth, parts one and two. So uh, well, I, mean, I think it's a natural progression. <laughs> Um, you know, no, that was, that was, yeah. As I said, I've been very blessed and lucky. I, I don't know, right place, right time. Well, and it was, uh, yeah, that was fun. I got to, I had this amazing guy who taught me Welsh and I sang and spoke in Welsh and that. Right place at right time, but people keep hiring you because you're great. And, uh, well, thank you. uh, We're all big fans. I love to do it, so. So uh, thank you so much. Really enjoy uh, Carousel. Uh, oh, thank I, you. Know, I am. I am. You have. Uh, you have. You know. You must be tired when you wake up in the morning because <laughs> you're doing so much. But uh, <laughs> but please come back and visit us uh, when you do your next project. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule oh. to visit with us tonight. Oh, my pleasure, you guys. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.